Hi all, I have just finished and released my last instalment in Bobby Fischer's career, 1970 to 1992. In fact, this is a really super exciting part of his career. As you all should know, he won the World Chess Championship in 1972. On the lead up to that, he crushed Mark Timonov 6-0. He crushed Bent Larsen 6-0. It was only Tigran Petrosian who put up a little bit of resistance with one single win against Fischer. Uh, so it, the match ended six and a half, two and a half. And Petrosian also ended Fischer's 20 win in a row streak, which set a world record. In that year, Fischer also got the highest ever FIDE rating of 2785 or thereabouts. Uh, so quite amazing world records being set by Bobby Fischer uh, around that time. So uh, yeah, you can see also in this course, 1970 was very, very interesting. The rest of the world, the USSR versus rest of the world match essentially got a lot of the top players together. Uh, and in fact, some of those players stuck around for later tournaments. We had the kind of world unofficial blitz tournament where we see in this course how Fisher adapted his opening repertoire uh, quite considerably, so not the usual openings. And I think you know there's lessons there for us blitz and, and even bullet players that adaptation to take account of all the specific factors, time control, etc., just to maximise win probability. I think it is one of my biggest conclusions from doing this course. Uh, one can kind of obsess about strategies like put oneself beyond defeat before going on to the attack and that's reflected in Fisher's games quite a lot as well. For example, in closed King's engine positions, there are a lot of games which are really, really smooth, how he locks up the Queen side and then goes on a King side attack. That's most evident in the closed King's engine positions, much more evident strategically than the Razor Sharp Sicilian Night Off. But it is there present. Some some of the uh, strategies from the Art of War, for me, they seem to be present in Fisher's style against specific opponents. And generally, his misinformation is also a kind of Art of War principle. Towards the 1972 match, uh, you know, he put some surprise openings in his repertoire. The Alakine's defense with black is one notable one. Playing 1b3 sometimes with white. But the 1972 match, obviously, well, <laughs> I hope most of you know, he, he introduced 1c4. He'd hardly ever played this before. The only 1c4 you know, main tournament game was against Polgiavski, which was a draw. And he had a default uh, win against uh, Pano, I, I, I believe. So it was a real shock to see his repertoire change. But if you think about it, the Art of War says that if you want to give misinformation to your, to your enemy, if you're near, pretend to be far. If you're small, pretend to be large, etc. So he saw he said, you know, one e4 best by test. But the paradox is, when it really counted, when the stakes were super high, he bypassed a lot of that Russian preparation. So this misinformation for me, Fisher is a total art of war, you know, genius. But art of war principles subservient to a more fundamental idea that really we we should be factoring in the finesses of our particular situation, time limit, opponent, blah, 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 how we feel, how, how our energy level is, how the opponent's vibes are. If we can factor that all in, it creates this kind of uh, appropriateness for maximizing your winning probability. I think for me that's my overall arching conclusion, conclusion you can get from looking through these games. And... I encourage you in this course to check out, you know, the introductions, which are actually done after. So I've had that experience of that voyage. I'm trying to crystallize these concepts and philosophies. And really, you know, that is my conclusion. Fish is like a winning machine. Even with the black pieces, you know, he'd be playing for a win when a lot of grandmasters, especially in modern times, they just play for a draw with the black pieces. And he'd string out games as long as, as he could to maximize win probability. Sometimes even opponents, uh, fellow US players playing abroad, he'd have multiple adjournments. And of course, by that willingness to you know, maximize probability, he's learning a lot of end game knowledge as well. 
his classic endgame to me is the bishop versus knight endgame. There are some absolutely beautiful examples in this course of the bishop versus knight endgame. So anyway, after the introduction section, which kind of sets the tone and, and things to look out for, we have the sections which are essentially the major tournaments. And each game I've analysed with the Stockfish Neural Network, the latest like Stockfish Neural Network, I've, I think I've quite often got really quite interesting insights into games. And I'm trying to find the truth. With the truth, I believe we can base our conclusions more solidly. If we have a true picture of a game, even in Games Fisher 1, you know, it's good to know if there was a slight issue or maybe a better way of playing it. So I want to sort of crystallize the truth and, and I find that is useful generally for my own chess when studying you know neural network games you know I, I also observe patterns as, as many of you know like form pawns or bishop without counterpart and in Fisher games there are you know other strategic patterns to know about and existing ones reinforced he did have form pawns quite often in Sicilian night he did have a bishop without a counterpart a dark square bishop without a counterpart and Fisher's tactics are absolutely amazing but uh, I, the win probability is the thing that really is now my overarching conclusion from doing all three of these uh, sections of his career. So this is the most exciting part of his career. The other point of note, I would say, in the last section, the 1992 match, this was actually underplayed, it seemed, by Kasparov. There were absolutely some really brilliant games in the 1992 match. And although um, Gary Kasparov apparently, you know, thought, oh, Fisher's come back to Earth like a mortal, you know, Anatoly Karpov is a great enthusiast of some of these games. There is evidence that Anatoly Karpov, big fan of these 1992 games. Uh, so he, he regretted, in a way, not playing Fisher. It would have been uh, a real-life experience. So that's a shame that the chess world never saw that match in 1975 between Fisher and Karpov. But yeah, the 1992 match is interesting. Also, you know, interesting is the 1977 Fisher against Greenblatt to see how Fisher completely squashed this early chess computer. So that's kind of fascinating as well. It seems, yeah, Fisher got this reputation as being like a human computer. He, he really... Uh, was very very technically precise some surveys indicate he's like one of the more precise world chess champions even more than Capablanca when you factor in the complexity of positions but for me yeah I think he's the great win probability maximizer I think that's the way I like to at the moment think about Fisher but please leave me your your thoughts and comments I I, I really engage only in Fisher the chess playing genius uh not not the other side which obviously is is a bit of a, da a major downer for many many people understandably yeah fisher did unfortunately seem to become uh unhinged later on totally unhinged i think he needed actually some some help uh big help early on uh, with some other issues but this is not this in the scope of the course this, the course is really to examine the genius on the chessboard and his legacy these games are really quite beautiful and instructive so this is the final chapter where he had that amazing 20 win streak it's worth checking out in my view and if you use kings crusher tv slash bobby fisher free there's a discount on that and i'll put also a super duper discount in the pin comment which only lasts the next four days as well so check out for the uh, pin comment in the description link as well but that is a major discount as well which will last uh, for the next 30 days kings crusher tv slash bobby fisher free so yeah i i found it a thrill to go over these games and my conclusion you know maximize win probability okay <laughs> i hope uh comments questions likes shares appreciated i hope you check out the course there are some free samples if you go to the course page as well there are some free samples uh to check out as well and I may uh, put some samples on YouTube as well, some sample games, of course. Okay, thanks very much.